Hello, good morning everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to try something new today. Why not? Okay, I want you to sing after me. This side of the congregation, sing this after me. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Welcome, everyone. All together, to the love of God. Well, you were really good. Now let's just sing it right out now. Don't be shy. Okay, here we go. Come, let us worship God. Wait till I sing it, then you sing it. <laughs> Someday we'll do it all together. Okay, and Adrian will play. So, first of all, let's try this. Come, let us worship God. Come, let us worship God. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, everyone. To the love of God. To the love of God. Wonderful. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to worship. And here we are now in the Lenten season. This is a season for self-examination and prayer. And we had a very meaningful service on Wednesday night with the uh -uh, distribution of the ashes. And so today, I would like to acknowledge the people who will be participating in this particular worship service. Our exceptional musician and director of music, Adrian Little. Uh, Anita Kalia will do the readings. And Lydia Rutger and Mary, Marty Church and Fran Maurer will be helping with Holy Communion. Thank you to our greeters and to John for running the computers, and Dave Spatzel for doing the recording. Just a couple of announcements about the children's message. Since each service is recorded, it can be watched on YouTube and on the Sogging Shores uh, online newspaper and <clears throat> on our website. And I know that there are children and adults watching those uh, tape services. And so they will be in their pajamas and having cereal um, watching the services. And so we're going to ask and invite them to come to church with us. And when they come, they need to know, and you need to know every Sunday, there will be a children's message. It would be part of our worship service here. And uh, I, I'm in honor of the COVID taped services, I was going to ask council if we could all have a pajama day and everybody would come in their pajamas. <laughs> and we could serve little boxes of cereal, you know, those little ones with their... But then I heard that um, some people don't own pajamas. And so <laughs> we're, canceling, we're canceling that pretty quick. The second announcement is a little more serious because it's about uh, supporting the people of the Ukraine. Um, today we're taking a donation and next Sunday we'll be taking a donation and, this, and these funds will be going to Canadian Lutheran World Relief. They have boots on the ground there and they will be helping the people in Q Ukraine on our, on our behalf. Uh, thank you to Karen Friday who donated the flowers and you notice that they're in the color of the flag of the Ukraine. She also sent me a video, <clears throat> an interesting video of a Russian soldier who had surrendered and the Ukrainian people are feeding him lunch. They're giving him a sandwich and some soup and a dessert, someone standing by, by the side with some dessert and they're chatting away to each other. It seems that when there's a war that the people of both countries really don't want to be killed or to kill anyone. And uh, so there's some grassroots organizations going on within the Ukraine and within Russia, within the mothers' groups, to, uh, to work for peace. So, we have some new people here. We welcome them to the church. And <clears throat> those around, if you could help and guide them through the service, that would be great. So welcome, everyone. And I've said we came here to worship. And the Lord be with you. Thank you. We're going to start by singing a hymn, number 641. Actually, all are welcome. You could stand if you're able, please.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. to listen 
and comfort others and help to bear their burdens. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. reading is from Romans. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 going to read Psalm 91 responsibly. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, God will rescue you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly plague. Thank you. Ah, thank you. Can we start this again, please? You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, you will say to the Lord, my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, no evil will befall you, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. Upon their hands they will carry you up. You will tread upon the lion cub and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who come to me. I will hold them because they know my name. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With the long life will satisfy them and show them our salvation. stand for the gospel acclamation and please note that it's the Lent version. of our Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, 
It is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will be yours. And Jesus answered him, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written. Jesus said he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil has finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. Please be seated. One day, Jesus the carpenter puts down his tools, leaves the village and heads south walking along the Jordan River. And there he meets his cousin John, who baptizes him in the Jordan Creek. And then he goes back up into the hills. The time had come for him to begin his ministry. It was important for him to be alone to decide how he would carry out his mission. He was faced with great decisions about his life's work. The temptations Jesus faced were a struggle with the devil. And Jesus rejects the temptations of food, of power, of glory, and worldly riches. We too are called to reject temptations. When we say the Lord's Prayer, we say, lead us not into temptation. Often we say these things by rote, and we do things sometimes, many times over, and it takes away the meaning. We sort of flirt with temptation. There's an old saying, I'm sure you've heard, opportunity knocks but once, temptation leans on the doorbell. I want to share you a couple of, a couple of examples with you. There's a man who owned a small town grocery store and he saw a little boy come in one afternoon. The little fellow stood near the front door looking at the barrel of apples. He would sneak a glance at the man and then return his gaze to the apples. Finally, the man went over to the boy and said, son, are you trying to steal one of these apples? The little boy said, no, sir, I'm trying to keep from stealing it. <laughs> The second story is written by Maurice Boyd, and he tells a story that sealed the impact that his father had on his life forever. Boyd's father worked in the shipyards in Belfast, Nor Northern Ireland during the Great Depression. The work dried up, times were really tough, and for three years, the father was out of a job. Then one of the father's old bosses at the shipyard approached him. This important and connected man would find work for Mr. Boyd. He guaranteed it. All Mr. Boyd had to do was to buy an insurance policy from the man. It would work to their mutual benefit. The boss's income would increase and Mr. Boyd's income would be guaranteed. It was a great deal, except for one thing. It was illegal. Maurice Boyd remembered his father sitting at the kitchen table with the whole family surrounding him. His father counted the cost, the outstanding bills, and the money he would be making, and the money he could lose. Mr. Boyd wrote it all down on a sheet of paper. And then he wrote down a category that Maurice Boyd will never forget. Integrity. 
What did it matter if he gained the amount of money to pay the rent and feed the family, but lost his ability to teach his children right from wrong? What did it matter if he gained the dignity of a job, but lost it each morning when he looked in the mirror? What if he could go to work each morning knowing that he took the place of someone else because he cheated? Boyd's father declined the job, and the family groveled for years of poverty. Yet of his father, Maurice said, he discovered that no one can make you feel inferior without your consent, and that one way you keep your soul is by refusing to sell it. He realized that whatever else he caught, lost, he didn't lose himself. Now, where did Boyd's father get an idea like that? Well, he got it from Jesus. From Jesus who pushed back against the devil in the wilderness. Integrity. Do you know someone who surrenders their integrity to temptation and is ready with a carefully constructed defense that tries to explain the rationale for their actions? Something like, well, everybody does it, or if I don't do it, somebody else will, or well, what difference does it make? We are tempted to seek popularity, to be comfortable, to never go against the green, we live in a torrent of temptations, and sometimes the boundaries we are tempted to cross are minor, and sometimes they are serious with overwhelming consequences. And what about all the collective commercials tempting us to go places and do things that we know we shouldn't do? There are temptations to cheat, to lie, to seek revenge, and of course, you've heard the expression, what happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. So you don't need an imagination to understand what that expression means. So here it is, the season of Lent, the season of self-examination. It's important to remember that temptations in themselves are neither good or bad, they just are. But the real question is, how do we respond to all these temptations? In what ways have you and, and I allowed ourselves to be influenced by the wave of temptations? It takes great strength to resist, and it takes commitment and clarity and the ability to just simply say no. You know, Jesus isn't alone in his resistance. Well, what about Francis of Assisi, and what about the slaves who followed the Underground Railroad and made their way north to Owen Sound? And what about Mahatma Gandhi, and so forth? So many people. We can take heart in the support of our church community, who in prayer and worship and discipline help us to resist the wave of temptation. So, as we journey along this week, Take the time to do a good examination of our own conscience, and let's renew our commitment to resist evil and oppression wherever we may find it. I encourage you to read the scriptures and take some time each day to say a prayer and thank God for your blessings. So I'll leave you with this something to think about. What do people think about God by watching your life. I offer these words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So there's a beautiful hymn. I want Jesus to walk with me. Number 325.
say the Apostles' Creed, which is on page 105. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Let us pray. Love of God, we come before you with hearts that are mixed. We are grateful for your blessings, but our gratitude can get blocked by other things. Cares about the world pandemic and the war in the Ukraine sometimes distract us from what you've called us to do. Please free our anxious spirits so that we can put the concerns into action that will help the world challenges. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who gathered in our church and fold their hands to offer grateful prayer, for those who are seeking to know the Lord and to have their knowledge grown into a firm and saving faith, and for those who mark special milestones in their lives and continue to count their blessings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who realize there is a need to be reconciled and take steps to make that happen. For those who are suffering illness or injury for whom prayers are needed, we name them out loud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those people who have generously given their time to our congregation, our choir that will soon begin again, our chair of council and all council members, the various committees that keep our church running and active, and especially the call committee, for the assistant ministers and the altar preps and those who serve as ushers. We pray for our devoted staff, Adrian, Julie, and Jen. Bless them for their dedication. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are taking the time to study the Bible during Lent. May their new knowledge enrich their lives and help them to share your word. We pray for our congregation members who come to worship and share in fellowship and join with us in our community of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These things we ask in your name, Lord Jesus, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Amen. Let's take a moment to share the sign of peace with one another, with each other away.
their love endures forever. You bring forth that from the earth and food from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts, that we might be for the birth signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Thanks be to God. 